Hi, I'm Nancy Shanto, and I'm going to read to you today from Access to Power, A Radical Approach for Changing Your Life. And I'm going to read to you from the Power Chapter. This is written by Julia Kelleher again. And this is a section entitled, Our Personal Slash Political Lives. And um, it's just talking a little bit about how we're living in this um, world where we're straddling both the transactions in our daily lives and also the big systems that affect um, our every day and how we can get mystified. So I'll let her speak and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. Children try to maximize their power by accessing it from their parents. And of course, parents get burnt out by their struggles in the face of their family's real lack of resources, time, money, energy, and so on. Parents and caregivers of all kinds sacrifice many of their basic needs in order to provide for their children. Community, economic, and emotional support from others can provide structural power to beleaguered parents and reduce the stressful effects of transactional power struggles. Unfortunately, individual parents often do not seek this kind of support and instead turn to their own personal power. Turning inward rather than outward for the solution is supported by individualism and the personal responsibility cult of modern U.S. culture. But no matter how much we might try to change patterns of behavior in transactions, using all of the personal power we have at hand, a certain amount of power to be happy exists in the world of externals. In the United States, we often suffer from deeply mystified and depoliticized personal lives to such an extent that we might end up trapped in trying to change personal internal relationship dynamics without looking at the structural external component. Our culture encourages us to avoid the fact that the personal is political, and we become more disempowered because the political is both hidden and interwoven in our personal lives. When we don't identify the sources of structural and cultural power in our lives, we often end up feeling powerless and blame ourselves and our closest relationships for our personal limits. We thus begin to empower ourselves when we look clearly at the difference between types of power, identify the best sources of power for our circumstances, and thereby create the most realistic change. Without consciousness and awareness, no change is possible. If we still feel stuck and unable to change, it's not our fault, because knowledge by itself is not enough. With knowledge, we can begin to gather our resources, build our communities, and take the actions required to make the changes we want in our lives. So I wanted to talk about this a little bit more because in our cultural environment, um, oftentimes we get really focused on our individual responsibility. And people will talk about responsibility, that you have to take responsibility in order to change your life. And I think that's true. And it's also true that we need to tell ourselves the truth about our environment, about the actual social and environmental and structural forces that are acting upon us, that we are unable to um, directly affect without taking some sort of community action or uh, political action, and that sometimes even do, taking that action doesn't change without a lot of time and energy and money and resources. So by naming our the real forces that are affecting us, the real influences on our lives and what we can and cannot directly affect, we often get a, a level of freedom from shoulds, freedom from things that we think we should be able to take care of or should be able to manage or should be able to rise above. And um, just accepting the fact that, that we're not able to make those changes can often be a huge relief because putting energy into trying to change something that is impossible for you to individually change is exhausting. And that release of energy, then we can apply it to the things that we're able to do. It's just a process by which if we don't make that move of acknowledging and accepting what we need to change, then it's much more difficult to um, release that energy because it's being spent elsewhere on things that we can't change. So a big part of this power analysis that if you do this power analysis and you really look at your different sources of power where you get power and you reclaim all of your power what happens is that um, you get to spend your power doing things that you can do because you've accurately assessed your situation and your powerlessness accepting our powerlessness and, and assessing and moving from an understanding of our powerlessness doesn't mean we're powerless 
It just means that we are no longer trying to change things that we can't individually change. And once we do that, then we have all of our energy freed up to do what we can. So I hope that helps shed some light on the dynamics around power and what we can do with it. Thanks.